Howdy, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I share all of my educational content in data science, specifically data analytics, geostats, and machine learning. So I've started a new series on my YouTube channel where what I've done is I've taken my many interactive Python data science interactivities, my dashboards, and I've started to walk through them and share my observations. And the great thing is you have the code so you can join in. So today we're going to talk about norms for predictive machine learning. And so to follow along, go to my GitHub repositories, Geostats guy, go to my repository, Python numerical demos. And if you go down here to interactive norms, you can go ahead and download that. It's right here. Okay, assuming you've done that, let's go ahead and do a kernel restart and run all, just so we're all on equal footing. I'm using standard Anaconda Python packages, so this should work. I've done a fresh install. I have the most current version of Anaconda here, so it should work if you have a, if you run into strange issues, you might consider updating your Anaconda. That's commonly what I observe with my students. Let's talk about norms. Why are they important? I'll zoom in here. We'll discuss just a little bit, just for a couple minutes, and then we'll go right to the interactivity. Keep this pretty short. Let's go ahead and talk about norms or vector norms. I'll spend a couple of minutes describing some fundamental concepts, and then we'll dive right into interactivity and we'll keep this short. Now, if you want to get a little bit more background information, I do in fact have a lecture on norms, part of my machine learning course, I spend an entire lecture talking about them. I also have a lecture on a summary of machine learning, which covers some fundamental concepts and terminology that I'll use on predictive machine learning. And I also have a lecture on machine learning with linear regression. Uh, so ridge regression and so forth. I have those all available. Go ahead and follow that link. All right, let's dive into a couple of details about norms. What it comes down to is this. When you're fitting your machine learning model to data, your training data, you're gonna have error. And, and that makes sense. In fact, it's part of the model. We expect that there's going to be error. And in fact, when we train our model parameters, we're typically trying to best fit the training data such that we minimize the error. OK, so what are norms? How do norms have anything to do with this? Well, let's calculate our error over our alpha equals 1 through n training. We're going to have errors at every one of those observations. So as we're fitting the model, you can imagine there's going to be some delta in y, which will be the model prediction minus the true value. y hat is our prediction, y is our true value, and that's the error. So while we're doing this, we're going to have this vector right here, which is going to be all of our delta yi, y2, y3, through the yn number of data. Now, you can't tell a machine learning model to just fit or minimize all those errors. That doesn't work. What we need to do is we need two things. First, we need to convert the error into a measure of loss. In other words, we're going to ascribe or assign a cost to the error. You might think that error is really bad. And so you might say that, whoa, the bigger the error, the cost should go up. Now, if you just use this delta y, it's, it's an assumption of the fact that it's like linear. It's going to be, oh, it's just as bad to, it's twice as bad to have twice as much error and so forth. That may not be the case. And you also have some weirdness with regard to like negative and positive error. So we've got to be more thoughtful about how do we take error and turn it into loss. The other thing is we can't take a bunch of losses over all of those data values and minimize that. We have to convert it to a single value. We need to summarize with one single value, and that value is our norm. Okay, so that's the concept of norms. Here's our initial vector right here with all of our data. 1 through n, we have our errors or our deltas. I like using delta notation. You could use some um, other types of notation, of course. First, we got to go ahead and convert it to a loss. And the way we could do that is we'll take the absolute value, these symbol, this symbol right here with the vertical lines, absolute value, and we'll raise it to a power. That's a pretty natural way to think about loss. It's general. And so absolute values, we avoid negative loss if we have like a p equals to 1 or 3. Yeah, an odd loss could have negative loss if you have negative error. 
Now what we'll, we're going to do is we'll take those absolute values and we'll raise them to P. And P is going to be our converting or mapping from error to loss. Okay, so, so far we've got the first thing done. We've gone from error to loss. Now I hope you can see with this general representation, P is a power. If uh, P is greater, we increase the sensitivity to uh, larger and larger errors. If, if you have a very large error and you use a large P, it becomes a dominant component of loss. It becomes really important. Okay, so that changes sensitivity of the model to extremes or outliers. Next, we have to take this vector of all of those losses over the training data and we convert them to a norm, also known as a vector norm. We need that one single value so that we can perform optimization and minimize that. The general P norm representation is the P norm is equal to the sum of all of those components, absolute values raised to the P power, and then we'll raise that to the reciprocal of the P power. Okay, so this is the common notation. Now you'll notice that our norm, it has a proper behavior we'd expect for a norm, that is a single value that is non-negative. It can be zero and it can range all the way to infinity depending on the problem, but it can't be negative. We don't expect a negative norm. Okay, now what are some of the norms we could work with? Common norms, Manhattan norm, also known as L1, you also with this notation L to the exponent one, this is where P is equal to one. And if you look at the equation above, the general P norm representation, you'll see it's just the sum of the absolute values. This is also known as a city block uh, norm. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Euclidean norm, it is the L2. This is where P is equal to two. And if you substitute two, P equals two in this general equation, you'll see that it turns into this representation right here. I removed the absolute values because we're squaring, we're not worried about negative values, but you could put the absolute value in there, it doesn't matter, instead of the brackets. And the general P norm, LP, is represented with the equation that I just showed. Okay, now does norm selection matter? And you're gonna find out it does. In fact, choices we make with regard to rich regression versus lasso regression all have to do with the regulariz regularization term and which norm we choose for it. Let me make a couple of comments. If you want more details, more descriptions, please go to my norms lecture on my YouTube channel in my machine learning lecture or my machine learning course. But let me make a couple of comments that'll help us with observations down below. L1 norm is going to be more robust. L2 norm is, mm, may not be so robust. What does robust mean? Resistant, resilient, robust in the presence of outliers. What is its sensitivity to outliers? The L1 norm may be unstable, while the L2 norm is more stable. And this has to do with the fact that if we think about in city block distance, you could have multiple paths that in fact have almost the same, the same distance as you're going through city blocks. And so what can happen is if you move data just a little bit, in other words, the destination, if you're going from here to here in a city, it might dramatically change which path you take. In other words, you could go like this, you go like this, but if you move a little bit this direction, now you must go this way and this solution disappears. This causes jumps in the possible solutions. Okay, so these are some observations. Go ahead and check out my lecture for much more details. The dashboard, I wrote a linear regression algorithm just by scratch, not a big deal, that allows you to change the norm. And so we can pick our norm and see what linear regression is gonna do. And we're gonna also have the ability to put an outlier in, move an n plus one data, which will be our, controlled by us. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get right to the dashboard. I'll run this code. I'll run this, I have a couple of functions just out of convenience to help us with plotting and doing the calculations. And we'll get down here and this is our dashboard. Okay, let's zoom out just a little bit. What we're gonna do is we'll first take our outlier and let's just tuck it in a bit. I'm gonna just drop it down and let's put it right about there. Now, if you look really carefully, what we have is we have a data set that's not quite linear. Uh, spoiler alert, it's following a quadratic, or it's a simple model that has y is equal to x squared. Okay, and then we went ahead and we put our n plus one data point kind of in the same line. 
Now I want you to observe that for all the possible norm choices, L1, L2, L3, they're all basically the same. In fact, right now we're using an L1 model. If we change it to an L2 model, if we change it to an L almost three model, to an L4 model, L5 model, L6 model, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna be basically the same. Okay, so let's go ahead, I'll put this back to an L1 right here, no outlier. Now let's go ahead and increase the outlier. Let's make it more of an outlier. There you go, you see this coming up, coming up. Now if you look really carefully, you see the separation of solutions now, the L3, norm for linear regression results in the green line, the L2 results in the red line, and the blue is the L1. You notice our solution is still the L1, it's on top of the blue line. Let's go ahead and keep increasing that. Do you all see what's happening here? This is exactly what we're talking about when it comes to robustness. That's just one data point, it's a bit of an outlier, yes. We have all of this data down here, and now for an L2, look at this. It's being pulled up just by that one single outlier. Now look at the L1. The Manhattan norm is pretty robust. It's actually doing a pretty good job of passing through most of the data nicely. It's not so sensitive to this single outlier. Let's go ahead and keep increasing, amplifying this outlier all the way up to the top here. And now we can see a nice spread between our solutions. Now let's go ahead and change our norms and just observe and watch what happens. We start with almost an L1, just a little bit over for L1, L1.5, L1.7, and guess what? When we get to about two, if I change this to a two, we're right on top of that red line right there. And we go ahead and increase the norm L2.3, 2.5, 2.7, and we can go ahead and force it to be 3.0. It's right on top of that line. And of course, we can keep changing this norm. Keep increasing it, increasing it, increasing it. We increase the sensitivity to that one outlier. And we can see we're getting a pretty poor fit with the majority of our data because of that. Okay, there's a lot of other things you can do with this dashboard. I wanted to keep this discussion really, really short. But if you want, you can increase more data. You can also play with the outliers I just did. You can change the norm. And I gave you the opportunity to add some error to the data so you don't have that really nice clean quadratic signal in the data. So check that out. You can make some noise in the data and see how this affects the overall solution. All right. I hope this was helpful. I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin where I teach and conduct research in data science data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. I'm always happy to discuss. All right, everyone, stay safe.